Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to my latest gaming news video. I will be covering recent gaming news as well as some other gaming related things in this video. I'm grateful for any feedback, so if you feel the need to do so, please leave a comment below. You can also like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. I'll now get into some gaming news from the past week or so. The first bit of general gaming news today is some Steam news. On the 12th of September of this year, uh, uh, Steam has turned 20 years old. Though it did have a beta phase before this where players could participate. But going by the its official launch, it is yeah, now now 20. And today's video will be a bit um Steam heavy, I guess, the first bit. So I've got a couple of uh yeah, Steam bits now, and I'll be covering a couple more deals than usual at the end, as uh, Steam has a large sale on due to its anniversary. So this is quite a big milestone uh for Steam and Valve and gaming in general and they are, yeah, since since releasing 20 years ago, they're now the biggest PC gaming digital like storefront. To celebrate this milestone, you can earn a special 20th anniversary edition badge for your Steam profile. If you have a 20-year-old account, I'll put up a tweet showing the badges. But yes, yeah, Steam is where I've um, played most of my uh, PC games for years now, so I'll just chat a bit about that for a moment. I've uh, yeah started um, playing other stuff like through GOG and the PC Xbox app the past sort of year or so, but um, Steam is still where I play the vast majority of my um, my PC games. I made my Steam account I think back in around two thousand nine, which was about a year before I got my first gaming PC I think. But before that, I sort of just used the the family PC. I can vaguely remember playing Counter Strike Source and some older games before that on an older account, but I think I lost that account. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's much older though. Uh, so yeah, since around 2009 I've been using Steam. I remember one of the first games that I wanted my own PC for um, was um, was Armour 2 and to uh, get it on Steam, but before Armour 2 I was um, playing like Gmod and yeah, as I said, Counter-Strike Source, Day of Defeat, Civ 4 and Rome Total War among others. The um, latter two of which I did have physical copies prior to Steam. I might have had a physical copy of Counter Strike Source as well. Funny enough I do still have that copy of Civ 4. Somehow I haven't lost it after all these years. So yes, yeah, Steam has been a massive part of my PC gaming life and I hope it has a long life going forward. Uh, Valve does provide a great service for Steam. I just have so many games on Steam and Steam is, a, is yeah really great and currently the most feature rich storefront in my opinion. So instead of finishing the Steam bit here, I thought I'd do an additional section where I detail the top 15 most played games on Steam, to so top uh, their peaks basically. Uh, but this is going by an IGN article which put together the list, it was last updated in early August of this year, so it might differ a bit. I did actually also check uh, SteamDB, which I believe is where IGN got its numbers from. But some numbers uh, did actually differ to the SteamDB numbers, so I'll, I'll use the SteamDB metrics, but we'll link both in the description, and I will we'll just go over each game in brief, nothing too lengthy. So at number 15 is Capcom Arcade Stadium, which peaked at over 488,000. Apparently this uh, game is on the list due to it being farmed at one point for her trading cards. Uh, it looks like Fallout 4, which is number 60, uh, 16, yeah, would be in this spot if it wasn't for those uh, pesky trading card farmers. I played Fallout 4 quite a bit, it's a great game, and it peaked a bit lower at almost 473,000. Number 14 is Terraria, which peaked at almost 490,000. I played Terraria, not much, but would like to go back to it at some point. Number 13 was Call of Duty Warzone, which peaked at over 491,000. In the IGN article, it says Warzone specifically, but the SteamDP page just says Call of Duty. Um, have played quite a bit of Warzone, not for a while though. Valheim is number 12, which peaked at over 502,000. Have played uh, Valheim quite a lot actually. It's one of my favourite games ever, really. It's a really good game, really love it. Last time I played it was, yeah, a few months back, I think. Apex Legends is number 11, which peaked at over 624,000. Have played Apex a fair bit, but not on Steam. I played it prior to its Steam launch on EA's app, and um, yeah, played it a couple months, uh, a couple months back, actually. Uh, number 10 is Goose, Goose Duck, which peaked at almost 703,000. I've not played this game. 
Baldur's Gate 3 peaked at around um, 875,000. That's made it into ninth place. Another game I've not played yet, but yeah, can't wait to play. Truly incredible game, at least when going by the game's critical and commercial success. Number eight is Hogwarts Legacy, which peaked just ahead of Baldur's Gate at 800 and approximately 879,000. I've not played it, but I'm also not a big Harry Potter fan. But I've heard it's a great game. Um, so yeah, might might try it one day. Number seven is New World, which peaked at almost 914,000. Haven't played New World. I don't really play MMOs much anymore, but I was thinking of giving it a go maybe at some point. Number six is Elden Ring, which peaked at over 953,000. Have played Elden Ring. It's a yeah, great game. I didn't finish it, but I'm planning on going back to it sometime, maybe this year or next, once I'm uh, yeah finished with some other games. Number five is Cyberpunk 2077, which is the first game of the list to peak at over 1 million, with it reaching a peak of around 1 million and 54,000, so 1.054 million. Haven't played Cyberpunk yet, but am planning to get into it at some point. I do really want to give it a playthrough. In fourth place is Dota 2, which peaked at almost 1.3 million, around 1.295 million. Have not played Dota 2, I've never really been interested in MOBA games. The only MOBA-esque sort of game that I played was Nozgoff, a, li a little bit of that. But uh, yeah, it's quite different to Dota, and I say was because that game now ceases to exist. In third place is Lost Ark, which peaked at around 1.325 million. This is another um, MMO, I believe, and yeah, I've not played it. In second place is Counter-Strike Global Offensive which peaked at almost 1.82 million. I did play a bit of uh, CSGO, but haven't played it in years. Uh, number, and yeah, number one, first place is PUBG, or Players, as it was known, Players Unknown's Battlegrounds, which peaked at a yeah, huge uh, 3.257 million. I didn't know it peaked that much higher than CSGO. PUBG is a game I played quite a lot, uh, quite a lot, um, yeah, back a few years ago. I still go back to every now and then, then but... Yeah, I don't really play it that much anymore. So yeah, that's the that's the top fifteen list. Uh, <laughs> quite interesting, I guess. And that's the basically Steam coverage from me today, at least until I get into the deals later on. I thought those were yeah some interesting metrics to share on Steam's twentieth anniversary. And now we'll move into the other the rest of the gaming news. So um, I've got some Starfield topics uh, first. Firstly, I shall cover my thoughts on Starfield. I Recently, start, recently started it after finishing Armored Core 6, which is another really great game. Really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I will go back to it and go through New Game Plus at some point. Uh, but yeah, anyway, back to Starfield. I've played around 9 hours so far. Might be a bit more than that by the time this uh, video goes up. And I guess 9 hours, but actually probably 8 if you were to take away time spent in character creation. So yeah, still very early in the game, but yeah, really liking it so far. I've not come across many issues, and the game generally runs fine. I've had a few hitches here and there, but it, generally it's okay. Firstly, I do really like the character creation in the game, and a game with a good character creator gets points from me, as I usually spend a fair bit of time creating my character. I spent about an hour, as I sort of alluded to, hour, hour and a half in the creator before starting the game. So yeah, it's got pretty good. Pretty good uh, detailed creator. I thought that the tutorial and beginning sections were pretty good. They don't show you everything as there is a lot going on in this game that I'm still trying to work out. But it does a yeah decent enough uh, job of getting you started. The ship gameplay is also pretty cool. I like the fact that you can buy slash sort of build as well as customize your ship inside and out. Um, and yeah, there's uh, from things I've seen online, there's people creating all sorts of uh, wild uh, sort of ship layouts and things. Yeah, really quite um, in-depth. One cool thing I will add, which <laughs> may seem a bit small, uh, is that you can exit like your seat and walk around your ship when in space. I just thought that was a nice touch. And yes, yeah, so far I've made it to New Atlantis, and I'm working my way through the beginning story quest line. Probably do a lot of uh, side quest stuff as well. However, I wanted to get a bit of experience with the game. In the more linear sections and story quests first but yeah in general i am so far liking it i've barely <laughs> touched the surface but it's pretty good uh, so far 
Now on to some news topics for Starfield. Starfield has now been confirmed by Bethesda to be the studio's biggest game launch ever. It was detailed in a tweet by the official Starfield X account that the game had surpassed over 6 million players and this was on the 7th of November and by now likely more have jumped into the game I would have thought. I think yeah 6 million is really impressive number given that the game has released on just the current gen Xbox consoles as well as PC. This means that it has beat the previous launches of games like Scar, uh, Skyrim and Fallout 4. Um, although I believe Fallout 4 did have a... There's some uncertainty whether um, Fallout 4 actually had a bigger launch. But I think um, going by Bethesda, if you uh, go with um, what Bethesda is saying, it looks like Starfield was actually a bigger launch. So yeah, that's cool. And uh, yeah, they're saying it's their biggest launch ever. The game is available on Game Pass, so I'm guessing those numbers are included in this. I think I'm pretty sure they were actually thinking about it now when the, the details I sort of looked into. Starfield also passed 1 million concurrent players across PC and Xbox uh, Series consoles on launch day, going by reports. So, yeah, the game is doing very well, and I'm yeah, glad. Starfield has also reached a higher uh, peak player count than Skyrim on Steam. Um, but it did fall short of Fallout 4 on the storefront. Starfield has peaked at over 330,000 players. For comparison, Skyrim peaked at, uh, peaked at over 287,000 players. While Fallout 4, as I <laughs> covered earlier, but it got beaten by um, that Capcom arcade uh, game, apparently, uh, peaked at almost 473,000 players. Um, yeah, guessing the Starfield figure would have been higher if it wasn't also on Xbox PC app and on Game Pass as these will be taken away from the Steam figures. Uh, but yeah, these numbers are quite high, especially given it is available elsewhere on PC. Now for some Starfield modding news. I have already covered um, some Starfield modding related news in a previous video, but um, now we have some more details coming from uh, Todd Howard himself. Todd has said that modders will get access to official Starfield modding tools next year. Todd was recently interviewed by a Japanese outlet, Famitsu. In this interview, he mentioned that mod support, I guess specifically from Bethesda, will, quote, be available next year. Although uh, modding is possible currently, and even very complex mods with the help of the Starfield script extender, it's, yeah, good to know that Bethesda will be providing official tools next year. I guess these tools will be similar to the creation kit modding tools, like those available for Skyrim and fallout 4 and yeah these tools will likely aid modders in the creation of more complex mods uh, alongside the starfield script extender todd also hinted at dlc which was already confirmed to be in development for the game but he didn't give any time frame for when these might be released as he said quote when it will be released is a secret so that's the starfield section of today's video finished um next up some news related to the game developer Gearbox. Looks like the developer of the Borderlands games, um, among others, might be up for sale. Gearbox is currently owned by Embracer Group, the company that recently shut down Volition following a company-wide restructuring. Now it looks like instead of shuttering Gearbox, they want to sell the studio. Embracer has apparently received some interest from prospective buyers, of which none are currently known. Hopefully someone can just buy Gearbox from Embracer, as I'd hate to see another studio be shut down as Volition was. Uh, yeah, that was, wasn't was great. I've not played much of the Borderlands games, mostly just the first game, but I do want to try the new ones at some point. So, yeah, Gearbox isn't the studio that I have much of a history with, but I think it'd be pretty bad if Embracer just closed them down. I could see Microsoft or Sony buying them, um, but... As we don't know who the interested third parties are, this is just pure speculation at this point. I'm not that keen on a multi-platform game series becoming combined to a single platform, but if it means saving the studio, I think a compromise might have to be made. I guess worse things could happen, like it, yeah, being shut down. Although I would say I would rather um, a publisher like THQ Nordic pick them up than even Microsoft or Sony. At least then I think they would be yeah, available on um, all platforms. I will add that um, Crystal Dynamics, the developers behind the current Tomb Raider games, is also owned by Embracer, um, which yeah has, has me concerned. 
I would be pretty annoyed if they were to close them down, though luckily there is no evidence yet that this may be the case. I really like the new Tomb Raider games, so yeah, I'd be pretty upset, upset if they uh, closed the studio. But we will, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see on that front. What um, Bracer seems to be going through a bit of a rough time at the moment, so yeah, <laughs> hopefully nothing else is on the sort of chopping block, uh, uh, so to speak, I guess. Now on to some Jagex and RuneScape news, uh, specifically for RS3. Jagex had planned to release a hero pass into the game RS3, which had pay to win aspects, but due to a massive community backlash, these elements will be removed. As far as I can tell though, the hero pass um, and these pay to, pay to win elements were just for RuneScape 3 RS3 and don't have anything to do with old school RuneScape RS RS. Uh, yeah, there would have likely have been an even bigger uproar if anything like this was considered for RSRS, especially considering that is the larger of the two games. JJX had described the Hero Pass as a, quote, always on reward system, and some pay to win elements included the ability to purchase Hero Pass levels and Underworld emblems. I'm not sure the significance of those, as I haven't played RS3 in a long time, but I much prefer RSRS. And now, due to the backlash from the RS3 community, Jagex is planning to update the game to remove the pay-to-win aspects of the Hero Pass, which I believe they've at least removed some of them already. It looks as though Jagex had planned to just alter these uh, these elements, these aspects of the Hero Pass, but now from what I can tell, they are removing them entirely. Jagex said, quote, We messed up. They want to say, quote, You've told us, amongst other things, that, this, it, that it was pay-to-win. Jagex appears to want player feedback regarding the Hero Pass going forward, and they said, quote, We need a do-over, so we will urgently patch the game to back out the controversial features you told us are your main pain points. This will then give us the time to digest your feedback in detail and engage in a community consultation to drive a thorough redesign and redevelopment of Hero Pass. Some of the paid for options have already been removed or are going to be removed soon. I will throw up a tweet by the official RuneScape account. Um, the purchasing of Hero Pass levels and Underworld emblems has been removed, I believe already, and the Hero Pass contact buffs will follow sometime this week from what I can tell and they will be removed. Uh, because of the introduction of the Hero Pass into the game, as well as these pay to win options being added, the game on Steam had faced review bombing and now sits at mostly negative with 25% of recent reviews being negative. OSRS is still doing fine though, as the Hero Pass had yeah, nothing to do with that version of RuneScape. I'm glad that uh, Jagex are rolling back these changes, although it looks like the Hero Pass will stay, but will have the main issues with it removed or reduced extensively. I'm surprised Jag <laughs> Jagex even thought that they could get away with a Hero Pass, especially one that included pay to win, <laughs> win mechanics. That's pretty wild to me. As mentioned earlier, and a in a previous video, I have played a lot of OSRS over the years and originally started playing RuneScape back when it was still RS2, but when it transitioned to RS3, I quit as, yeah, I didn't enjoy it. And yeah, I've not been back since. I just didn't like the direction it went in and is going in. But when an old school RuneScape was announced and released, I jumped straight back into that. It is one of my most played games and was one of my favorite games, but I don't really play it anymore. I jumped back on a few months back, but only for a couple of weeks. OSRS is one of the games you, you can't just escape, I guess. Um, you always sort of jump back in for a bit. I can see myself getting back into it for a more extended period of time in the future. But um, but yeah, at the moment, there's so much more that I want to play and experience than a sort of single MMO being confined to that. But yeah, it's a great game. It's just very time consuming. I may jump back on for a bit, actually, when the sailing skill releases. As that will be the first new OSRS skill since it released around 10 years ago. So yeah, that's cool. And it's kind of been a massive uh, meme in the community, I guess, since uh, RS2 back in the 2000s. And I do want to see how it ends up. Now, before we move on to the upcoming game section, I will be covering the recent release and uh, subsequent reviews for NBA 2K24. I had covered a little while ago that Overwatch 2 is now the worst reviewed game on Steam. And it still is the worst on Steam, with only 10% of recent reviews being positive out of um, around 79,000 recent user reviews. And now the newly released NBA 2K24 
has almost supplanted uh, Overwatch 2 with it coming in second place on Steam's worst reviewed games list. NBA 2K24, when I checked, had an overall an overwhelmingly negative rating on Steam with 9% of all reviews being positive. As this is a new game, we don't have a separate recent review uh, uh, section or metrics. I believe Overwatch is Overwatch 2 is is still uh, scoring lower or the number one worst game uh, ratings wise as its overall rating is 9% like NBA 2K24 but it has many more reviews 184,000 compared to NBA's 3,800 and uh, yeah it seems the main problem that PC players are having with the game NBA is that the PC bought is based upon the last gen console version of the game the Xbox One and PS4 not the Xbox series or PS5 versions of the game uh, due to this, as you might expect, the game looks worse than current gen console versions of the game and also lacks features that those newer consoles have. As the VGC uh, or Video Game Chronicle article notes, the PC version doesn't have certain modes including My MBA and the W, whatever that is, I'm not really sure, and has a smaller open world in My Career mode. So yeah, this is pretty bad. I'm very surprised they didn't port the most up-to-date and feature-rich versions of the game to PC. I'm guessing that 2K just doesn't really care about PC and it's just more of an afterthought. I'm not interested usually in any of these annual sports games, but just thought I'd add that this in as it just shows how some publishers and developers don't care for the PC. I'm not sure who to blame, but I suspect that the publisher 2K just didn't care about the quality of the PC port. Which, yeah, is bad, and they're right for you getting blasted by the uh, PC player base. Now on to the um, upcoming games section. So, got a quite, quite a few games in this week's upcoming game section, including the game I've been interested in for a while, but also some other interesting-looking games. And as always, there will be footage and images of the games covered. The first game in today's upcoming game section is a game I've covered or mentioned a couple of times, and it is Liza P. This is a game I've been looking forward to, and... I've been keeping tabs on it as I do like the look of it. Liza P is a Souls-like game set in the fantasy world of Pinocchio, so a rather <laughs> intriguing setting in a sort of seldom used setting, at least when it comes to games anyway. It's a, yeah, Souls-like and I mostly love all the From Software Souls games. I prefer some to others, but uh, yeah, I'm not getting to that in this video. So I'm glad they went with the Souls-like route with this game. It looks really cool. It fits pretty well, kind of like Dark Souls and Bloodborne combined in, in some ways. Devs also say it's inspired by the Souls games, said it directly. Uh, the Steam description reads, quote, Liza P is a thrilling Souls-like that takes the story of Pinocchio, turns it on its head, and sets it against the darkly elegant backdrop of the Belle Epoch era. Does look, uh, game looks pretty good, and I'm very interested to give it a go. Probably won't play it on release, as I'm now <laughs> playing Starfield, but do plan to play it at some point. The combat is uh, fast paced like Bloodborne but also has a Dark Souls feel to it. I'm guessing it will be a punishing game but whether it will be as punishing as Dark Souls can uh, can be, um, yeah, uncertain of that at the moment. Graphically it is a nice looking game, at least going by what has been shown of it. I do like the game's dark aesthetic, it looks quite Victorian and uh, combined with the gothic sort of look. Liza P is the game that yeah interests me the most from today's upcoming games. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how it is received and how it reviews. I'm hoping it's a good game as I yeah do like what's um, been shown off of it so far. Liza P is releasing on the 19th of September and is releasing on PC as well as current and last gen consoles minus the Switch. So if you look um, like uh, Dark... Dark Souls-like games, uh, definitely check Liza P out. I'll be watching reviews for the game when it's released. Just thought I'd mention that Liza P will also be coming to Game Pass Day 1. Up next is Mortal Kombat 1. It is the 12th mainline game in the long-running franchise. It is classed as a sequel to Mortal Kombat 11, but also as a reboot of the franchise. You've likely heard of the Mortal Kombat games. Uh, they've been around since the first game released in 1992. They've yeah, pretty, pretty, been pretty popular for a number of years. Um, I will say that I've never played any of the Mortal Kombat games, um, at least not any of the recent ones. I think I've played one of the old games from PS1 or PS2 era, but none of the newer games. I'm not a fighting game fan, really. I do like some of them, but they're games I sort of seldom play. 
last one I played a fair bit of was Super Smash Bros. Melee uh, on the GameCube. That Yeah, I think I was with a few friends, and we're talking back during the GameCube PS2 era, so a while ago. I was quite young, but I do remember playing it and really liking it. Back to MK1. The combat looks good, as you'd hope, given it's integral to the game. Graphically, the game looks quite impressive. It is a nice-looking game, and the animations are nice, as I believe is is the case with most of the Mortal Kombat games as well. The story is a major part of um, Mortal Kombat 1, at least from what I can tell. Mortal Kombat 1 is releasing on the 19th of September and is coming to PC, current-gen consoles, and the Nintendo Switch. Uh, it kind of surprises releasing on the Switch, but that, that's pretty cool. Next up is a really nice looking pixel graphics game, Moonstone Island. As described by its developers, it is an open world create collecting life sim. Sorry, I messed up my words a bit there. Creature collecting life sim. Yeah. Uh, it does remind me of uh, Pokemon, specifically the Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald era, or the third generation. But it does have its own look and feel. Uh, pixel graphics are of the high fidelity kind and is a very nice looking game. I really like the art style and direction. As I mentioned a number of times, I really like the pixel aesthetic, but haven't played many pixel graphics games, although I want to get into some in the future. Gameplay wise, it seems you travel and explore the world while collecting creatures, and the open world does seem quite big with 100 islands to explore, going by what the description says. It is also card based, as detailed, quote, Make friends, brew potions, collect spirits, and test your strength in card-based encounters to complete your alchemy training. The life sim side of things seems quite cool as well, as you can build a home and as well as customize and decorate your home, and um, and also um, farm and grow crops. Gameplay does seem pretty varied, with a decent amount of things to keep the player busy. The Steam page also details quote travel by balloon, broom, and glider through unique biomes to reach the outer edges of the world, tame and befriend wild spirits to fight alongside you, discover and explore dungeons to earn upgrades, collect loot and uncover secrets, optimize your character with unique skills and upgrades, craft dozens of items and vehicles to prepare for the treacherous wilderness. <laughs> I'll have to cut these quotes down a bit in the future. <laughs> bit of a long one there. Um, so yeah, it seems to me that there will be a lot of content in the game. The game has me intrigued and I'll definitely be keeping an eye on it to see how it's received upon release. would like to play it someday, it does look really good. I've not really played any games with card based combat either, or, although I wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't mind giving it a try in this game. Moonstone Island is releasing on the 20th of September and it's coming to the PC, Mac and the Nintendo Switch. I yeah, feel it is a game that will do, do well on the Switch. It does seem quite suited for that, that platform. But yeah, likely it'll be great on PC too. Now onto another interesting looking game. That game is Party Animals. Party Animals is a casual party multiplayer game with a realistic physics engine. It does look uh, quite quirky and cool. Kind of reminds me of Fall Guys or Human Fall Flat. Played Human Fall Flat a fair bit and that's a pretty good game actually in my opinion. But uh, yeah, back to Party Animals. It is a game I think I'd like to try. The gameplay has... You play as a puppy, kitten, or a number of other animals, including gorillas, crocodiles, tigers, ducks, and a moose, among many other animals. So the game has, yeah, a lot of uh, playable animal variety. And there are sort of outfits for each animal, which is, yeah, which is cool. Seems the game will be rather competitive and require you to work together or against one another to complete tasks, etc. Description reads that you, quote, fight your friends as puppies, kittens, and other fuzzy creatures in party animals. Pull it out with your friends both online and offline. I did actually uh, check and the game features local multiplayer or couch co-op which is yeah good to know. Looks like the type of game that would be fun online as well as in couch co-op. Graphically the game is going for a more casual simplistic look but it does fit the gameplay style quite nicely. I do like the art design for the game. It's not the type of game that would uh, do better with realistic graphics. I think it looks pretty good as, as is. I would like to, yeah, give this a go as it is coming to Game Pass, so I may see if I can get a friend to try it with me. So, yeah, I think I'll try it out sometime. The game does look quite enjoyable and fun. Party Animals is releasing on the 20th of September and is coming to the PC as well as 
current and last gen console Xbox consoles. It does look like it will be exclusive to the PC and Xbox for a while as the game has an exclusivity contract with Xbox. As I mentioned, the game is also available on Game Pass and on day one. Now for a game that is the third installment in a popular FPS franchise, and that game is Payday 3. It is a sequel to the very popular Payday 2. Payday games are first-person shooter heist games or bank robbery games. I briefly played um, Payday 2, I believe, during a free weekend a number of years ago, but from what I can tell, it is well-liked by its fans. Hopefully Payday 3 can live up to the second game, as with Payday 2 it's an FPS with a focus on co-op, where as mentioned you plan and, and execute bank heists. Uh, during these heists you must deal with the police who attempt to stop you and your team. The previous game in the series, Payday 2, came out just over 10 years ago in August of 2013. So yeah, Payday 3 has been long awaited. Hopefully it will live up to the franchise's uh, fans' expectations. With Payday 2 being so well reviewed with over 400,000 reviews and a rating of very positive on Steam, Payday 3 yeah, has some, a big boot to fill. Uh, if you're looking for an FPS uh, like heist co-op game, then Payday 3 is definitely a game you should check out when it releases, but maybe check Payday 2 as well. I'm pretty sure the player base won't just dry up when the new one is out, but, but you never know. Payday 3 is releasing on the 21st of September. And the game is coming to PC and current gen consoles, but no sign of a last gen version. One might come at a later date, but I'm not sure. I suspect that um, Payday 3 will have a free weekend at some point, as Payday 2 had a number of these over the years, so you can always wait for that if you wanted to. The final game that I will cover in today's upcoming games section is Warhaven. I had covered Warhaven in a previous gaming news video, and yeah, now the game is releasing. Warhaven is a free-to-play, team-based PvP medieval fancy warfare game. It looks kind of similar to For Honor, but has its own take on the genre. You might also compare it to Mordhau, Chivalry, or War of the Roses, although I feel it is closer to For Honor, with yeah some fantasy elements added in. The game yeah looks cool. I do think it, it I'll give it a go at some point, with it being free-to-play as it has a low barrier to entry, so to speak. Uh, although it is free to play, I will say I'm a bit concerned about the monetization. I haven't seen anything that would point to it being so predatory, but you know how some free to play games can be, so it's something to think about. I do understand that the developers slash publishers have to make money, but hopefully it's not too unfair or pay to win. I will be checking back in on the game around release just to get a feel of for how like the yeah the player base is reacting to the game and. I may watch a couple of reviews. Uh, so far though, it does look quite interesting. Graphically, it's going for the realistic look, but with a fantasy flair. It does look quite nice actually, uh, graphics wise. I feel that usually free to play games are a bit less visually appealing, which doesn't really matter much with these type of games, but Warhaven does actually look good. Um, combat looks quite good too. Weapons seem quite weighty and impactful, and there are a lot of customization options by the looks. I'm not usually into fantasy based games in the genre, but um, yeah, I generally prefer games like Mordhau or War of the Roses, which are more grounded in reality, I guess. Warhaven is coming out on the 21st of September and will be only be coming to PC through Steam. I've also noticed that the developers slash publishers Nexon have mentioned it will be early access, but the Steam page doesn't mention this. And I wouldn't be surprised if a console version released at a later date. Now for this week's game deals. These games will generally be games that I've played. Steam has a lot of game deals on at the moment due to the 20th anniversary. So there are a couple more deals than usual this week. I checked other stores and these uh, games that I'll be talking about aren't discounted elsewhere. As far as I can tell, they maybe by the time this video goes up, they, that may have changed. Um, so, But yeah, it's just Steam deals this week. Also, as is commonplace now, I will add footage and images to the games that I cover. And actually, I did want to add, before we get into the deals, that going forward, these game deal sections will likely be reduced, as I feel they take up a bit too much time, and they're not really uh, news-related. I think I will still generally include some game deals at the end of these videos, uh, maybe, but the coverage will be shortened, and only if I think they are notable deals. And also, as I think I've mentioned in past videos, if there's a large sale event on, then I will cover that in a separate standalone game deals video. But yeah, I want to focus a bit more on the new side of these videos in the future, so 
yeah, these gaming deal sections will be, yeah, probably reduced and have their own standalone video when sort of um, I feel the need for one. Usually around like a, more, a larger gaming deal event, maybe. As, yeah, I feel that would be a bit more appropriate than including them as their own sort of large section in a news video. So the first game in today's game deal section is Resident Evil 4 Remake, a game I have played the demo of, but can't actually wait to get into the full game, as I really enjoyed the RE2 and RE3 remakes. They're great games, great remakes. I believe this is the first time the RE3, RE4 rather remake has went on sale, which is understandable considering they only released earlier this year. The RE4 remake is similar to the previous two remakes style-wise, as it uses the same RE engine. As I said, I did play the demo for it, and it does feel like the previous two remakes, and that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. If you didn't uh, already know, it is a remake of the original Resident Evil 4, which came out in 2005 for the GameCube, and later that same year for the PS2. Uh, I believe Resident Evil 4 is widely considered the best game, uh, best in the franchise, yeah, from what I can tell, and I think this remake lives up to that original game, and this can be sort of seen in the reviews I guess ratings for the game on Steam Resident Evil 4 remake has an overwhelmingly positive rating on Steam with 97% of reviews being positive this is according to around 55,000 reviews so yeah that's really impressive Resident Evil 4 remake is on sale until the 25th of September and the standard version of the game is discounted 34% while the deluxe edition is discounted 30% the separate costumes and other DLCs are also discounted, although to a lesser degree, around 25-26% to 26% off. I will mention that the other Resident Evil games are also on sale, including the original Resident Evil 4 and other remakes, and this is related to the uh, to Tokyo Game Show 2023. The second deal in today's video is actually a remaster of a trilogy of games, the Mass Effect games, as part of the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I've played some of the Mass Effect games, mostly the first game and uh, Andromeda. I really don't know why I didn't play the second and third games, but did play Andro Andromeda. Uh, don't judge me too harshly. <laughs> I do want to go through the trilogy at some point, as I really enjoyed Mass Effect 1. And they're on Game Pass, so I might just go through them on there at some point. I also say that I did like Mass Effect Andromeda. I bought it on release as I got really hyped for it. But I do know the reputation it had, mostly around release. It is reviewing better these days, with 73% of recent Steam reviews being positive, but uh, I think it's generally considered the worst of the Mass Effect games, although, as I said, I did like it. The original Mass Effect trilogy is very highly reviewed, especially the first two games. The third had a rougher reception. The second game is considered one of the best games of its generation, the Xbox 360 and PS3, uh, that is, generation. And the first game is also held in high regard. And in case you didn't know, they are futuristic sci-fi RPG games. Mass Effect Legendary Edition is on sale until the 25th of September and has a rather good discount of 80% off. I will add that Andromeda is also on sale for the same amount of time and the same discount. But yeah, that 80% that's a rather decent discount on the Legendary Edition trilogy as you get, yeah, three very good games. I guess the third is a bit more mixed though, but yeah, generally three pretty good games. Now for a game I've played a fair bit of over the years, and that game is Armour 3. It's, uh, yeah, wild to me that this game came out 10 years ago, on the 12th of September, actually, uh, 2013. It doesn't feel that old to me. If you're not familiar, familiar with the Armour games, they are open-world tactical military sim shooter games featuring first- and third-person shooting or perspectives. Uh, combined arms warfare, so land, sea and air, and they even feature stealth and RTS, very light RTS elements. They're also heavily customizable and moddable games with overhaul mods and more basic mods. DayZ actually originally spawned as a mod for Armour 2 Operation Arrowhead. I would say of the three Armour Armor games that I've played, Armour 3 is my favourite. I did, did also play a lot of Armour 2, especially the DayZ mod for it. But Armour 3 is, in most ways, a general upgrade to that game. You can even mod over the maps from Armour 2 into Armour 3 and port other stuff over as well. There are plenty of Steam Workshop mods for that sort of thing. But yeah, it is a good game when played solo or in multiplayer by yourself, but I feel the game does really shine when playing with friends. Armour 3 is on sale until the 25th of September, and like the previous deal, is also 8% off, which is yeah, a pretty good discount for such a good game. 
the other armor games are also on sale, including all the games. I believe it's all of them and their expansions in a large bundle, but the discount is smaller. Now for another shooter, this time a multiplayer FPS game, and that game is Insurgency Sandstorm. I have played quite a lot of Insurgency Sandstorm, yeah, another game I've played a fair bit of. Um, also played a fair bit of the previous game, as well as the much older mod that spawned the two newer standalone games. Uh, the mod was Insurgency Modern Infantry Combat, which was originally a Source Engine plus game mod. To play it, you had to have a Source game like Half-Life 2 or Counter-Strike Source. Uh, Sandstorm is the latest game in the series and it's a very good shooter. I have spent many hours playing this game with friends and alone. There are a few different game modes, either PvE or PvP. I mostly play co-op uh, PvE and yeah, I do still jump on it uh, in certainly Sandstorm from time to time. Played it relatively recently actually. The game has lots of customization options for your character, including a wide variety of guns and equipment. The map, uh, maps are also uh, yeah quite varied and cover mostly the Middle East, but also other regions. The gameplay and gunplay is pretty good, and the animations, the aiming, the shooting all feel rather good. So if you're into FPS games, it's definitely one I'd recommend checking out. It isn't as realistic as Armour, but it certainly has more realism than the Battlefield or Call of Duty games. Insurgency Sandstorm is on sale until the 18th of September, and is 67% off until then. There are also different editions of the game which include different cosmetics etc and these vary in discount from 55 to 60 percent the final game in today's game deal section is one of my favorite games ever <laughs> a game i first played a couple years ago and that game is kingdom come deliverance i've mentioned this game a number of times before and that's because i really love this game i wouldn't say it's my favorite game ever i don't think i have a definite favorite game but it is up there with a number of other games are vying for my sort of <laughs> top spot. Um, it is essentially a single player open world RPG set during the late middle ages or late medieval period. You play as Henry who is basically a peasant that must rise up the social ladder in one way or another and who lives in a town in a town in Bohemia which is a historical region within what is now the modern day Czech Republic. Kingdom Come Deliverance is set in a real world location which you can research for yourself if you like. And there are even people who have went and compared the, the real um, game worlds and is an impressive simulation of the region. The depiction of medieval life in this game is, yeah, the best I've ever come across. It is really impressive, the attention to detail in this game. The developers, Warhorse Studios, uh, did a phenomenal job. Graphically, it's a very nice looking game. You can get sort of lost in the map, exploring the towns, villages, and the forests, which all look incredible. And yeah, the map is actually pretty big. Pretty, yeah, pretty big and full of detail. The game does have a lot of content, many quests and many locations. Gameplay wise, you can do the usual medieval sort of RPG things like sword fighting, archery, or thievery, and many others. It is set in a realistic depiction of the medieval ages, however, so no, uh, oh, med yeah, middle ages, uh, so no magic. Another thing I would have mentioned is that the game can be quite punishing at points, especially the combat. Um, there is fast travel, but that can be dangerous. Just walking around the country roads by yourself can be dangerous, as it apparently was during this period. I could see someone getting frustrated with the game at points, as I did, at least before I got used to it. I would recommend checking reviews of the game if you're not sure about it. But, um, but yes, yeah, it's not too bad once you get used to it, but it can be hard at points. I don't want to go too deep into the game here or drift into the weeds um, but yeah in my opinion it's an incredible game probably helps that I enjoy the medieval time period along with many other sort of historical periods I guess I'd love it if um, they used this engine or an updated version and created a game set in ancient Rome or Greece or Sengoku period Japan that, that would be amazing Kingdom Come Deliverance is on sale until the 21st of September and the base game and the Royal Edition are 75% off the Royal Edition includes the game's few DLCs. So for those, yeah, discounts, I'd really recommend this game. If it looks like the type of game you like, even full price, I'd recommend it. But yeah, you can't go wrong, I guess, in my eyes, uh, getting it on discount. Uh, another thing worth mentioning is that Warhorse Studios is likely working on a sequel. Nothing has been confirmed from them, but a number of things point to the game being in development currently. So <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that one. The yeah, sequel, hopefully it's... Uh, just as good the first game or better.
So that is the gaming deals section done just, um, and the general sort of news stuff all done. So I'll now do a quick YouTube spotlight. And this is a, another modern vintage gamer video um, where he uh, dumped and preserved an unreleased original Xbox game. In this uh, video, uh, MDG, I won't go into it too much, uh, definitely go check it out. He basically obtains a hard drive from an old original Xbox development kit and was able to preserve a couple games, including one that was never released. It's uh, yeah, actually quite an interesting watch. Um, always interested in these types of uh, videos on YouTube. But yeah, that's Modern Vintage Gamer. I'll link it in the description as I always do. That's all the game coverage from me today. I will be publishing a tech news video tomorrow, so check back for that if you're interested. As always, feedback is appreciated, so go ahead and like or dislike and leave a comment. If you enjoyed my videos and commentary, uh, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back again soon.